Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at a comparison review of the first two Kilcarran 8s that had sherry cast maturation. First one here, the first uh, release for sherry cast maturation is Recharge Sherry, and the second one is Fresh Sherry. Both eight years old, both around 57%, Dustin, is that about 57, right? 57.1, 56.9. Yeah, first one 57.1, second one was 57. 50, yeah, 56.9, so yeah, they average just about 57%. So here we are again, Dustin, trying to like Karen. Yeah. We'll see what we got. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys weren't aware, the 57.1 came out to obscene hype. Uh, it, was, it became a secondary darling real quick. Mm -hmm. And this one... A little less fanfare, still sold out instantly, still mm -hmm. had a secondary, but this one was a little more polarizing. This one seemed to get more likes. We'll tell you what we think. As you know, we won't pull any punches ever, especially with this distillery. Yeah. That classic glue. Yeah. <laughs> Here come the horses. It's just so obviously young. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the uh, the first the first one here, the 57 one, the recharge here. Yeah. Pungent. I will say there's some nice uh, fruits coming in from the uh, sherry cask once you really get past that initial upfront youthful Kilcarran note. Yeah, it came off very Kilcarranate port initially, just as offensive as that one did, but it, it settled in, settled in here. So hopefully, we're in for a little bit. Of I mean, experience. honestly, Mike, it's not super aromatic given that it's a sherry cask and it's cast drink. Um, it's just, it's not a particularly aromatic whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's not particularly. Honestly, if I'm drinking this one, I'm probably nosing it real quick, and I'm probably not going back to the nose. But it's a strong nose. I mean, that grain and glue is just so predominant. It's. I mean, it's there to me. It's really. I'll put it this way: if if I'm like just kind of like letting it sit here in front of me, I don't really smell it. Like if I put my nose in it, I can obviously. Yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah, I, I guess you're right. When we poured these, it didn't. It's like they jumped off the jumped off the counter at us. Some type of red crab apple yeah I mean, i'm great in blonde but yeah <clears throat> slight turn up i mean nothing enjoyable a lot of oak yeah a lot of oak that's kind of more dominant than the sherry this one is more chocolate butterscotch and yes sulfur yeah i was gonna say <laughs> you can't get away from this is a sulfury whiskey and these are both about halfway and it's still sulfury you know very and not sulfur in a good way. Sometimes we'll say that and people are like, oh, that doesn't sound good. I'm like, nah, no, you should try it. Oh, this is bad sulfur. This is not the this is the type of sulfur you shouldn't try. That said, I really like the butterscotch chocolate thing up front. <laughs> but it does have some redeeming characteristics, does it not? I, I really like that, like the butterscotch chocolate. I don't think I've ever gotten that on a sherry whiskey like this before. <sighs> there, there are some positives here. And it's almost like the sulfur is actually hiding the parts <clears throat> of the young youth in Kilcarran I don't like. Like they're kind of coming together. Better the devil you know. <laughs> like, you think you don't want the sulfur. <laughs> you do. <clears throat> but no, there are some nice, like, okay, you said butterscotch. I was going to say like buttery chocolate, so like chocolate fudge. So maybe like Buckeyes, which you is could, a thing here in Ohio. You could almost argue for me, Mike. It's got the butter you get at the movie theater on your popcorn coming through a little bit. <laughs> it is rich. I got to say, man, I actually kind of enjoy this. I, I know the sulfur initially is up, tough, but once you get past the sulfur, I really like what it's doing. <laughs> it's amazing. That's the lesser of the two evils. <laughs> <laughs> but make no mistake, it's sulfur. Yeah. And as I've told people, I am not sensitive to sulfur. As much as most people. I mean, this is Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur. This is fire and brimstone. <laughs> There's times when people say sulfur. I'm like, really? And I'm like, I, yeah, I guess you're right. This nope. is nope. instantly sulfur. No one's missing that. No, no, no. You are... <laughs> You don't. You can't smell if you can't pick up the sulfur on this. Having said that, I much prefer batch two fresh sherry. Ah, to, to me, it smells. Again, it, it's really interesting. It's really special. Go back. Go back to batch one. No way. It smells like a dead tree. <laughs> you, I mean, the, the amount of you said this one was an aromatic. Comparatively, there's no just there's no air. It's not. Aromatic. This is this is this is much more. <laughs> there's much more going on here, and yes. it it jumps out of the glass more. This one. It gave me something. Yeah, man, it, to me, honestly, now going back, it's almost like I just went out into like a forest and there's a tree stump there and I'm sitting on the tree stump. Very woody. It's really just wood at this point. Like I, it, all the other notes are been, <laughs> my nose has been killed with sulfur. It, it almost smells like a tree that was kind of um, in this wooded area not far from our high school that got hit by lightning at one point. Like, you know, long time ago, like two, three, two or three years ago. It got toasted or something. Yeah. So, I mean, it is ash. So, like, you know, when you get the normal wood smells, but it's just. It's yeah. substantial, and it's even got like I mean again, you're, it's a it's a cool, moist you know forest. 
There's even some mildew growing on this thing. Just like that tree, someone I always thought needed to get rid of that. Maybe the chicken broth. Okay, so we both much prefer batch two. Oh, yeah, on the nose. The, the fresh air. All right, let's go batch one. Yeah, batch one. Give it a little taste there, Mike. See what you think. Um, again, 57.1%. This one, I'm telling you, people were running out and buying six, seven bottles of this, uh, stockpiling it. So this one really got a lot of people excited. We'll see if it does for Mike. Spice, char, grain. I mean, I should say something about those notes. <laughs> <laughs> those notes are there. Those are all the parts that were used in making this whiskey. Yeah. It's an engine. It's got tires and a steering wheel. Um, I can taste the char from the charred cask. Mm-hmm. I, that's there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any of these things are done to a level to where I find enjoyment. It is boring as hell. Um, the parts are there. So, dead I wood. I, I still don't even know why I bought this because I tried it before I bought it, and I still bought it just thinking, well, maybe I just was misremembering, or maybe I had something so good before it that I just ruined the opportunity. We all make mistakes. This is just. When I first had it, I really disliked it. Now that it's opened up, it's subsided a bit. You know, the alcohol has slipped out a little bit. It's decent cherry. It's too much oak. The malt is fine. Uh, it's too young. It's dirty. It's too much oak. You're right. And it's young. I didn't even mention that because I'm just putting together just the basic elements of the structure of what this is. Like, this does nothing well. I, I mean, this... You know, uh, the malt malt review said the uh, local barley, the 10-year, um, that was super sherry that Springbank did, mm -hmm. would make a great steak sauce. Okay. This would be the steak. This would make steak sauce for like, you know. Um, Ponderosa. Yeah, like the Sizzler. Like, yeah, Golden Crow. Yeah, Golden Crow. Like, I mean, it, it's it's still steak, and, it, you know, it adds something there, but it's definitely not the premium. The York Steakhouse of sauces. I just... Honestly, it does nothing for me, Mike. No, yeah, that's that's not what I would bother even it's, spending it's, the calories on. It's not unpleasant, but it's not it's nothing special about it. All right, moving on to batch yep. two. Hop Fresh air. So again, this one came out. This one seemed to polarize a lot more. I know there's some people who really did not like it because of the sulfur. And so the question is going to come down to, I think, a lot of what Mike thinks of sulfur. Because I know where I'm at on this one. Um, it has such a unique nose. Like... It, if you don't find the sulfur just repulsive, you almost have to, at some point, smell this whiskey. Wow. Spice and sulfur <laughs> on the palate. I don't like it as much on the palate as I did in the nose, I'll tell you that. Mm. When, you, when you exhale, that's all you get is just eight metallic chips or something. Mm -hmm. Metallic chips and barley. That's a lot of sulfur. That's mm. dirty. That's dirty sulfur, too. Mm. Is Say it, it though. Reminds me of like a homemade barbecue sauce on the finish, though. I mean, it's got some decent. Funk. It's funky. A lot of funk. Um, kind of remind, you know, believe it or not, Mike, this reminds me of my first Springbank 12 a little bit in the funk and barbecue notes. I thought you were going to say Springbank 10. I thought there was something here on the finish that reminded me of that. As soon as you said Springbank, I knew that's where we were going with this. Well, well so the first 12 I had was one of these that was one of the more sherried ones and it was a very funky weird thing it was my first time ever having Campbelltown you know this is well you know way back six seven years ago and I remember sitting there with that whiskey thinking to myself I don't know if I like this or hate this <laughs> like I couldn't tell I was like what do I think of this I've come to actually think I actually enjoy this one quite a bit <laughs> it's sulfury it's got egg farts like for days on yep. it but there is that chocolate that switches into the barbecue, like sour, funky weirdness that I kind of like. There's that toffee note. You are at a Texas barbecue that, for some reason, you smash an egg like on a hamburger and cook the egg on top of the steak right at the end of it. <laughs> it's it's interesting. That is pickled egg. God. <laughs> <laughs> but again, there are a couple of things I like here. There is a nice chocolatey oak note here at the end that is pretty yeah. decent. That butterscotch and buttery toffee kind of notes are there too. I mean, they're all there. I mean, even kind of like a twinge of honey. Yeah, in the middle. No, of, yeah, in the middle of that metal. Yeah. Now I put water in there because I think the water will help a little bit with that sulfur note. 
there was uh, something the show like when, we, when I was a kid called like that's incredible or something like that. And this dude ate a bike, not like, but he broke it down to small like little chips. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Rubber chips, metal chips. But I saw. I think, was, I think it was some guy in China, I want to say, that ate this bike just a little piece at a time. And I off when I was starting to smell like that sulfur note mm-hmm. and everything, and I had that first drink, I'm like, it's almost just like you're drinking with a little bit of metal chips in it. Make it yeah, metallic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird. The metal chips are, you know, yeah. got battery on them or something. Yeah. So while you're uh, getting your final thoughts on that one, I'm gonna. I'm, I've been nosing over here on the 57.1 now that the water's kind of sat in there for a minute. Well, my thoughts was there are things I didn't like and the things that I liked about it. Yeah. So that's certainly better, at least on the nose and on the palate. I like batch two fresh sherry far better than batch one. I will say now that the water's been sitting in the 57, the sweetness is starting to come out. It did kind of calm it down. Now I can. Now there is some milk chocolate to it. Yeah, I can get past the just oak. The glue note's gone. Uh, it, it, it's it's coming and going for me. Still. It turned into actually a nice light vanilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's about it. Maybe hay. The palate is. I, I don't know. why I always get hay like with these Kilcairns. Their grain note to yeah. me comes off like hay. And you know, now that I'm drinking it, yeah, it's oak. It's hay. Nice little vanilla. It almost, honestly, I'm, I'm forgetting that it's sherry finished uh, at first, mm-hmm. but it's also because we're coming off of this, which is a much, I mean, it's fresh sherry versus Richard. This is obviously more yeah, you could sherry give, forward. You can miss Mrs. Bourbon cast maturation all day. Right now, and I'm again, if, if we had this by itself, we wouldn't say that, but coming off of this guy, it's a little mm-hmm. different. Water definitely made that quite a bit better. Yeah. Because thank God it did something well. <laughs> took, it water took the water well. beautiful. Took water well. Yeah. This thing is such an interesting whiskey. That's what it's come to. It took water well. That's the best thing I can say about it. Mm. There's no way they're ever sending the samples. No. We're probably not getting spring bake either now. Ooh, the finish actually has kind of gotten really long on this. Um, really long finish here. Dude, this come, calmed down the sulfur note on this. This is actually an enjoyable whiskey. Yeah, that's what I was going to tell you. So water really... So I know we both had this one before, Mike. I don't know that you've had the second one because um, you told me not to bring the vase back. <laughs> I had to sneak these in. As soon as I saw them, I'm like, what are you doing? Stop bringing this. I'm like, I got to get rid of it somehow, Mike. <laughs> I actually think the water really improved that one. In fact... It's got a lot more depth. It's got a lot more finish. It's got, I mean, it actually is kicking well above its eight-year weight in terms of complexity, depth. Mm. All water did that was favors. Yeah, it helped a lot. For both of them. Mm -hmm. For both of them. I'm going to put a little more water in that one. I mean, the second one is still better uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, we can can start talking about them, but the second one is definitely better. Both of them handled water really well. Mm-hmm. Both the water took away the things I did not like at all about the whiskeys. It is shocking how much sulfur I got neat on this, yeah. and how much it took away when I put some water in it. Well, and the sulfur also on this one, just sitting out in the glass, is going to fade away. We we didn't have these out. That how long. could it not? And I didn't want them out for too long because I wanted you to get that sulfur note initially because there was so much. That's why people just have run from this bottle. It's it's not an easy note to take. No. Um, but yeah, again, you know, if I, if I were to throw out whiskey scores here, just in general, I'd call this maybe like a 86 mm-hmm. and it's only like an 80, 81, something like that. I mean, it is substantial difference between these two yeah. whiskeys, just to give the people an understanding of what the disparity is, in my opinion, between the Having two. had these open for a while, I think when I first had this one, this probably would have been like, you know, some stupid score, like a 60 for me, but I do think, yeah, 80. When you put water in here, it's probably a fair score. 78, 81 range for sure. This one, I, yeah, I think 85, 86 is a fair score. It's There's things I enjoy. There's things in here that really, I mean, you don't get until you get into some older whiskeys. You just have to get past the sulfur. It's just the first Kilcarran I've enjoyed in quite some time. Actually, I'm surprised how well I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I've actually really always thought this one was pretty good once you got past the sulfur. But again, I'm not sensitive to sulfur. I don't hate sulfur in all cases, but this is the sulfur people hate. This is not the good sulfur, guys. This is, is this is going to, if you don't like sulfur, this is, you're going to be like, you're not even going to look at this whiskey again. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a commitment. 
All right. Um, are we both in agreement that the second yeah. one is better? Do you want to you want to expand uh, on your well, thoughts? Well, you know, let's just get at this one. So, I said this is about an eighty-ish. You're sure. kind of there. Mm-hmm. This is a bottle of whiskey. If you like big, bold, intense whiskey, don't buy it. Huh? Don't buy it. No, no, no. If you, if, it, if you like big and bold whiskey, right? Mm-hmm. This is big. It's bold. It's dirty. It's messy. It's, in my opinion, poorly done. But, you know, if this was like a $20, $30 bottle, and that's your profile, this would be like, okay, yeah, this would be your cheap one. It's, and in the UK, these are like 40, 50 pounds retail. So for them, they're probably thinking this is a pretty cheap way to get a nice punch in the face. Yeah, I mean, if it was a $40 whiskey here, that would change. Well, I mean, it wouldn't change my whiskey score on it. But, yeah, but it would I change mean, my opinion of where it sits. Correct. Well, why this, people yeah, this one at the $100 US price that I paid... I'm not upset about it. I, I enjoy it. It's not one I drink that often. But I think it's an interesting whiskey. I would much rather it be 70, 80, because it, it's eight years old. Yeah, I mean, if it's single malt scotch whiskey, I don't care if it's eight years old or not. And it's cash strength in today's day and age, you're going to pay And it's first fill sherry. Yeah, I mean, there, there's reasons why it's going to be expensive. Yeah, yeah, but for me, this one, you know, the value price on this one, if it was 80 bucks, I'd buy another one. <clears throat> At 100 I'm glad I got the one. And, of course, secondary is like two, 300 on these things. Maybe more. So, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. As we keep trying to hammer the Kilcairn train as much as we possibly can to find appreciation for it. And we have found a bit of appreciation for it today, if nothing else. This is truly... Got some elements of quality, high-end whiskey. And a few off notes. These are at least fun to drink. Yes. These are at least fun to drink. Anyway, those are our thoughts on these two. These are, again, the first two releases of Kilcarran that had sherry cast maturation. Uh, the Recharge Sherry and the Fresh Sherry. Both around 57% ABV. This one's slightly over 57. This one's slightly under. Mm-hmm. Dustin, until next time, we'll do worse to folks. Happy sulfur in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then. <laughs>